it's a dangerous organization. They need to be held accountable. What are their key tools for grooming and sexually abusing? It's a bigger betrayal. With the Pope's new decree restricting the traditional Latin mass, some are turning to the Society of St. Pius X, the SSPX, a breakaway priestly group that offers the traditional liturgy. But the SSPX is not the safe haven people assume. Never before released evidence obtained by church militant pierces through the veil that cloaks the society to expose a dark reality, the disturbingly large number of predators in its ranks and leadership's continued lack of transparency and protection of abuser clergy. There are hundreds of cases that to me, to me of what I know, there might be anything between, let's say, five and 200 cases of abuse. A shocking and very telling admission. This Caught on audio, a father, Jorgen Wegner, former U.S. District Superior for the SSPX. That lone comment raises many questions. and has enormous implications for the society, which portrays itself as holy, pure, untainted by the moral corruption of the so-called Vatican II sect. I want you to include in detail any sexual temptations you have, any sexual thoughts you have, um, or actions you've committed. And I kind of looked at him and he said, this is because you don't understand what sin is and I'm gonna help you to understand sin. Whistleblower Jassy Jacobs first exposed a cover-up scandal last year involving Wegner's failure to investigate grooming and abuse allegations against one of his priests, Father Pierre Duverger. Worse, Wegner lied about the restrictions placed on him. And he says, listen, Jassy, the restrictions are so severe for him that he literally says mass and he has to run and hide afterwards because if he is even seen talking to a woman, he's done. So did you believe him at the time when he told you that? I did. A couple weeks later, I am making a visit at the church and I see a poster of Father Duvigier, um running a pilgrimage, which is more than 50% with, with adults. Women. Right, and they do confessions on pilgrimages. So I, 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 I... Were you shocked? Yeah, I knew right then and there the restrictions were not as severe as Father Wegner had led me to believe. That's been confirmed by a visitor to Duverger's chapel, who said he saw a whole line of women waiting for Duverger to hear their confession. After Wegner had expressly said he was not allowed to hear women's confessions. Jassy contacted multiple authorities in SSPX leadership to warn them about Duverger, including current Superior General Father Davide Pagliarani, only to be stonewalled. And he says that the Superior General wanted me to respond to your email. We, he measures your sorrow. However, the decision's still Father Wagner's. So I'm like, okay, th thanks for nothing. <laughs> Not only has Duverger faced sexual grooming allegations, he also faces multiple sex assault accusations. not just Father Duvigier at this point. Right. It's, a, it's a bigger betrayal that the SSPX as an organization has been choosing to handle these situations like this. Long before Father Duvigier came to America, questions swirled about his reputation in France. This cryptic message left on a French traditionalist forum in 2005 reads, L'Abbé Pierre du Verger chasserait ses maîtresses. This has several possible meanings, including Father Pierre du Verger is rumored to chase off, hunt down, or prey upon his mistresses. Just two years after these comments, 
Father Duverger was embroiled in a sex scandal in Bordeaux with a young woman he was counseling in preparation for marriage. As a result of their reported sexual liaison, her engagement to her fiancé was broken off, and Duverger was abruptly transferred in the middle of the school year. More on that later. But in addition to this scandal, Church Militant has confirmed with another woman in Europe that Duverger had sexually groomed her through explicit conversation. He was obsessed with me masturbating, constantly talking about it. The victim has asked to remain anonymous to protect her family. Like Jassy, she received counseling from Duverger to deal with childhood sex abuse. The difference is this woman was only 12 years old at the time. Sometimes he asked if I looked at myself in the mirror while naked and always saying one day I'll fall in love and make love. An emotionally and psychologically damaged girl who turned to her priest for help and who instead used her trauma for his own sexual gratification. Father Duverger focused on explicit and sexual details. Duverger was also in the habit of engaging in late-night FaceTime sessions with girls he was counseling, sometimes calling past midnight, sending numerous selfies, some of them shown here. He would ask the girls to call him Daddy, at times signing off by saying, Daddy loves you. He would even ask them to appear in their underwear. Returning to a sex scandal in Bordeaux, Church Militant has confirmed the identity of his victim. Her father is a prominent attorney who's defended the SSPX in court. He was so outraged by Duverger's actions, he initially planned to file a criminal complaint of rape. In French law, Duverger may have committed a crime involving abuse of a vulnerable person. Punishable under the French criminal code with up to three years in prison, and a fine of almost $500,000. The crime involves taking psychological, emotional, or physical advantage of a person vulnerable owing to age, illness, infirmity, or psychological deficiency. When it involves taking sexual advantage of a vulnerable person, it rises to the level of rape, as the person would not truly be capable of consent. According to sources, her father only dropped the case after another SSPX priest urged against taking the matter to court. That priest, Church Militant has learned, has since bitterly regretted his counsel after learning of Duverger's later assault allegations in the U.S. These include charges from a young Missouri woman counseled by Duverger. She is also a childhood victim of abuse while her family, who she claims abused her as a child, has dismissed her as unreliable, both law enforcement and victims' advocates find her testimony credible. If her allegations of family abuse are true, it would be in the family's interest to deny them, as the family is well known to the local SSPX community. And there's evidence her own mother was gravely concerned about Duverger. Several years ago, the mother contacted Father Kenneth Novak, formerly stationed in St. Mary's, Kansas, to express concerns about Duverger's requests of her daughter. From Novak's January 15, 2020 letter addressed to Superior General Davide Pagliarani, she asked what I thought of Father Duverger's instruction to her daughter that she sleep the night with her live cell phone open to Father Duverger. I thought it was creepy. After the alleged assault on the daughter, Duverger gloated, hinting of the power he holds in the society. At the breakup with the alleged victim, Father Duverger spoke, nobody watches me, nobody will investigate my things. I hold a lot in a whole other location. SSPX leadership never actually investigated these allegations. They also wrote off Jassy's claims. 
Ms. Jacobs testifies that for the past two years, SSPX priests have not treated her seriously, shuffled her around, displayed fake remorse, put her off deceptively, and made fake promises. She's been made to think her story isn't important enough, and the SSPX has been derelict in its duties. Multiple allegations, yet as district superior, Wegner never launched an investigation, merely transferring Duverger to St. Thomas More Academy in Sanford, Florida, putting him in charge of male and female students. The whole thing could have, honestly, we wouldn't even be in this situation if Father Duverger would have been investigated. You could have literally said, yeah, I did an investigation, and that would have been the end of it. And instead, nothing was done about it. And now you have several people who say, hey, um, he was improper with me, and he's running a school? Ruth Ann Parks is a longtime victim's advocate in St. Mary's, Kansas, who's helped scores of survivors. She recorded this phone conversation in April 2020, audio that's been turned over as evidence to the Kansas Bureau of Investigation. If this was a regular teacher in any like public school, they'd have been fired, terminated, and sent to the cops right away. End of story. There, in a certain way, I don't want to defend Father Duverger, and I will not. Even as he admits he won't defend Duverger, Wegner downplays the priest's actions with young women. If Jesse admits, and even the others admit there was nothing criminal. Oh, oh one of them absolutely denies. I mean, they, she is, she would, and I'm, she would tell you that it was criminal. That what happened to her was not okay, and it was criminal, and there should be a criminal investigation for that allegation alone. But you compound the other three in, knowing and now the SSPX had knowledge that um, Father Duvaget was up to no good. It's called the crime of solicitation. What it involves is a confessor, um, directly or indirectly, in any way using the confessional to, uh, to lead some other person into a sexual sin. Theologian Dr. John Lamont believes Duverger did commit a crime, the canonical crime of solicitation in the confessional. It doesn't have to be a sin of act. Uh, it can be a sin of speech written or spoken, or it can be a sin of, uh, of interior thought. Dr. John Lamont is a longtime SSPX insider, attending their chapels and having his children baptized by the SSPX. He's the most highly regarded theologian arguing in favor of the society's theological positions and was responsible for drafting much of the 2017 filial correction to Pope Francis, even persuading Bishop Follet to add his signature. Lamont says Duverger's actions attempting to elicit needless graphic sexual details from Jassy make him guilty of solicitation in the confessional, where he first pounced on the chance to become her spiritual advisor after learning she's a childhood victim of abuse. Of course, this is part of a broader strategy of grooming, and grooming itself is, uh, also falls under the category of that, of that sin, solicitation in the confessional. So he was guilty of a very serious crime in canon law that uh, is punished even in the new code of canon law by penalties up to and including dismissal from the clerical state. Lamont believes SSPX leadership is engaged in a cover-up of Duverger's crimes. They lied to her and ensured that he was being dealt with, that he was being investigated and that he was restricted, which was not the case. Um, only when she found out that this was not true did she make his uh, did she make his uh, his misdeeds public. Lamont goes much farther and believes Pope Francis, who is likely aware of the abuse scandals in the society, handed them a gift in his latest modu proprio. So by giving them this extraordinary privilege of, conf of hearing confessions anywhere, which he hasn't withdrawn. Uh, He's both given them huge power to continue 
um, and extended their huge power to continue to continue their practice of, uh, of sexual corruption and corrupting people in the confessional. He's given them uh, for which they owe him something, right? And he's also enabled them to walk much further down the path of corruption and sexual abuse, which gives him a better hold on. While Wegner publicly plays innocent, a series of emails Church Milton published last year between him and SSPX communications director James Vogel reveal they were well aware of Duverger's troubled track record. From Vogel's February 24, 2020 email to Wegner, we cannot issue a blanket denunciation of the accusers and say he is innocent of everything. Church Militant has already dug into some of our ugly cases in France. What if they find out the history here? We can admit he's been placed under restrictions, but I still think most people will find it bizarre he is allowed to teach, run a school under the circumstances. Another SSPX priest confirms Father Duverger has abused others. From Father Hervé de Latour in this December 14, 2019 email. We know of several victims already, so we should do something to protect other potential ones. But as an organization, are you willing to take the risk that he's not going to reoffend? Are you willing to take the risk that he's going to be um, in a school setting and that he is going to behave himself fully and, and just it's going to be okay? Are you going to be able, because if, you, if, he, if that happens, Father Wagner, and he goes out and he does something, you are 100% culpable because now you know. Are you willing to take that risk? No, in a certain way, I, uh, I, I'm not willing to take that risk. In spite of Wegner's words, SSPX leadership has taken that risk on numerous occasions. After the 2007 scandal in Bordeaux, then Superior General Bishop Bernard Fillet abruptly shipped Duverger off to America in the middle of the school year. Fillet lied to his flock, explaining the transfer was owing to reasons of health related to his heart. Duverger was sent to a remote monastery in Silver City, New Mexico, to do one year of prayer and penance, something Wegner has publicly acknowledged. Duverger was then reinstated to priestly ministry, in keeping with Bishop Fillet's modus operandi of squirreling away guilty priests in remote places before returning them to ministry, where a number of them went on to abuse again. Fillet's actions are no different from what scores of bishops did for decades. Including the notorious Cardinal Bernard Law of Boston, exposed by Boston Globe's Spotlight team for his record of shuttling predators from parish to parish, sending them away to rehab on so-called medical leave before giving them another assignment where they'd find more victims. I wish to apologize once again for the harm done to victims of sexual abuse by priests. Law was forced to resign in disgrace in December 2002, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. My family, we were left to pick up the pieces. And how do you do that? Filet? He got a comfortable retirement in the $40 million SSPX seminary in Dillwyn, Virginia, leaving his own trail of destruction. It's too yeah. difficult. Yes, it's, and it's, then, it's, yeah, it's, still em it's still emotional after all these years. We indeed receive the grace. Church Militant has learned some SSPX seminarians are angry at Bishop Fillet for his mishandling of abuse cases and the shame it's brought to the society. These seminarians desire authentic reform and are deeply disappointed in leadership's failures. Just as Cardinal Law and so many bishops rationalized their shuffling of predator priests by claiming those were different times, so SSPX leadership says the same. In fact, Wegner actually compares their approach to shuffling predators to car manufacturing. If today you get into in a car, it's it's normal that you have airbags everywhere. Right. 
but but in 1990, no. I, I I can tell you, I can tell you the first car I bought didn't have an, an airbag, it didn't have a brake system. It was simply a basic car, and and that is that is that is a mistake. That is a mistake that some people make that they uh, that they take 2020 standards and want to apply them to a 1990 or 95 situation. When Bishop Fillet reinstated Duverger in 2010, only two years after his suspension over rape allegations, Duverger was actually given a promotion, assigned as personal secretary to the U.S. District Superior at SSPX U.S. headquarters in Platt City, Missouri. Duverger was also assigned to work alongside spokesman James Vogel on the communications team, an alleged predator priest now handling communications for the U.S. territory of the SSPX. The society has been less than forthcoming about the scandal, with Father Duverger even threatening to sue church militant for defamation, a threat he has yet to follow through on. His attorney, Rosa Armesto of Miami, Florida, is being paid by the SSPX to defend Duverger. And she's made a point to dismiss his accusers as liars. But Armesto has her own track record of deception. Punished at Florida State University Law School for cheating on her final exam. A five-member law school panel unanimously upheld the ruling, as did a state court. From the 1992 case, Armesto v. Widener. The hearing panel's finding that Armesto cheated during the exam is supported by substantial, competent evidence. Armesto was convicted based on clear and convincing evidence. Armesto's appeals of this negative ruling were dismissed, and the case is still cited as precedent in Florida law. Perhaps the most stunning among Wegner's remarks is his admission of as many as 200 abuse cases. There are hundreds of cases. To me, to me of what I know, there might be anything between, let's say, five and 200 cases of abuse. These remarks raise a number of serious questions that must be answered. Was Father Wegner referring to abuse cases only in the U.S.? That's the natural implication, considering he was in charge of the U.S. at the time. If so, that would mean 200 abuse cases among only approximately 50 priests, an extraordinarily high number. That would also mean the total of abuse cases worldwide would be many hundreds more, with 680 society priests globally, according to the latest figures. This leads to other questions the society must answer. What is the actual total number of abuse cases in the SSPX over the course of its 50-year history? How many SSPX priests have been accused? How many of those allegations are credible? What actions were taken against priests who were credibly accused? Only global headquarters in Menzing in Switzerland knows the truth, and they aren't answering questions. Unlike almost every diocese or religious order in the country, the SSPX has never published a list of credibly accused clergy. When Church Milton asked the Superior General if the society ever intends to do so, there was no response. We also asked Paul Urani to reveal the total number of clergy accused of abuse or sexual misconduct. Again, no response. In this, other dioceses are light years ahead in transparency and accountability. The SSPX remains stuck where the church was in the 1980s, back before the Boston Globe exposed massive abuse cover-up, leading to a flood of exposés and lawsuits around the country, culminating in the Dallas Charter with its so-called zero-tolerance policy for clerical abuse. 
The SSPX has yet to face such a reckoning. The society made a small step toward reform after church militants' own explosive spotlights last year, when the U.S. District, for the first time in its history, established an independent review board to investigate abuse claims. Victims were initially hopeful, only to be disappointed by the society's failure to follow through on its promises of transparency and accountability. These catchwords are touted in Plan to Protect, the society's abuse prevention program, which in reality just ensures the society is covered by insurance in case of sex abuse lawsuits. In spite of numerous requests from victims to publish the identity of its independent review board panel to ensure no conflicts of interest, the SSPX refuses to do so. This is contrary to the practice in numerous dioceses, where the identities are published for the world to see. Church Militant has also learned of individuals who've filed complaints with the review board, only for their complaints not to be taken seriously. For instance, this woman, whose identity we know but are not allowed to reveal. The SSPX has completely stopped communicating with me. They don't care. One of their plan to protect people has taken my case to them after I have exhausted all my efforts to get responses from them. And she said she has heard nothing. I asked her to bring it up to them again. I have proof in my case, and still they do nothing. So yeah, there's still, the conversations are still going. I still have um, victims lined up to speak to. So like, it hasn't stopped since my post. Right. So it's big. When Jassy first went public last year, about two dozen victims reached out to her and made contact. Since then, that number has skyrocketed. That was a year ago. Now I've spoken with hundreds of victims of SSPX priests and staff, she says in a June 15th, 2021 Facebook post. Do you understand that, that literally this is a minimal amount that you can do that's going to help restore faith and trust with people? I do not want people to lose their faith. The people of SSPX are good and they're good people. Despite all the things that are going on right now, the, the last thing they need to do is lose their faith. Even as the Superior General refuses transparency, Al-Yurani is taking full advantage of the Pope's crackdown on the traditional Latin mass, using the opportunity to make new recruits. From a July 22nd letter, the Society of St. Pius X has the duty to assist all those souls who are currently in dismay and are confused. We must extend a warm, helping hand to them. As so many have learned, that warm helping hand is immediately withdrawn as soon as members break their silence about SSPX leadership's moral corruption and cover-up. Christine Niles, Church Militant, Detroit.